You're back in the Pizza Hut shirt, and it looks like I'm in the Pizza Hut shirt. It's the same kind of colors. That I mean, yeah. Let me zip up my freaking jacket for someone comments. Oh, look at this Mark and his Shawn Michaels shirt. Brother, who the fuck cares? But shouts out to Levi Blue, though, because did you see his status, what he said? He was standing up for uh, being yeah. Marks, wasn't he? Exactly. That's why I, I officially like Levi Blue, and I just met him at XICW. Oh, we're starting off with that. KPB. <laughs> yes. Top Gun, Forever Young. It's episode eight. Let's hop right into it with the thing that everybody's been talking about. We're a little bit late. If this was three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> TKW versus FU. It finally happened. That's finally right. Happened. The ratings war. The ratings are in for TKW versus FU. And TKW was at 60, right? What? 60 people showed up. 60 people? Okay. I think so. Yeah, that's what inside sources told us. Yes, very close source. 60 to 70. Yeah. And a few was at? Like, we were there, so. I don't know. I don't. Uh, Probably J the same. Jeremiah, leave it down in the comments below. <laughs> you he can't ask him to say it. <laughs> well, he knows better than us. It probably, I mean, it's a bar, so it probably was like the same. 60. Probably. I would say. Capacity, right? And there was no shots thrown at either show. Yes. <laughs> that totally. we know of. <laughs> totally. No, zero. Zero. That I None. know. At least yeah, that I know yeah, of. I have no idea. I don't see no shots. Yeah, me neither, bro. I don't know. Are you being sarcastic? Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm being for real. I didn't see no shots thrown. If if you guys know some shots that were thrown at TKW about FU or at FU about TKW, please leave it in the comments down below. Yes. And remember, Cody. You're Cody, just inciting drama. You're just telling them, hey, go instigate drama, please. Let us know. Let us know. Or actually, yeah, let us know. I don't know. But Cody Fleming, I remember what he posted on Facebook like the day before the show started. Brother. What did it say? Like, it said, shouts out to you, by yeah, the way. Shouts out. Rassum Ray. TKW and FU running on the same days, huh? Can somebody <laughs> explain this? Yeah, that started a big string of, of comments, brother. And then, like. And all I'm getting, somebody was uh, hella in the comments arguing. Yeah, so what the we question. Were, we were in the car ride from hell. At that time. <laughs> the question of the day was, what was it? What oh, fuck? who had the date first? Did they run against each other? Was it intentional or not intentional? Yes. That's the question of the day. That is the question. And we I got, feel like we might know the answer. We got that. the answer. Just look at Cody Fleming's comments on Facebook. That's uh, right. That's for y'all to find. Yeah, we a couple weeks ago. Few unfortunately, weeks ago. we did not get to partake in all that fun drama because we were too busy missing a UPW show. Yeah, so I so, like to call this the car ride from hell. Me too, <laughs> because it's not so much the car ride from hell because of the people that wet that we were in the car with. Shouts out! It's to just Jess. the Story like, rough. yeah. Shouts out. Jeremiah Stoner Ref, everybody that was in the car. Jason Her DeMilo. Kid, yep. Jason DeMilo, who is a way better person than me because <laughs> he, he wasn't even booked on the show. He was just going to go with us and he had to deal with all that. That show made me so broke. But let's get into oh get, let's God. get into the car ride from hell. Yeah, so basically like is it's just unfortunate because all like the stuff that had been acquired for that car before that was like new just simul like state to state started breaking down. So so we were booked at UPW in the UP. Yeah. Against Twist and Flip. Shouts out to them. Very good wrestling. Was very much looking forward to that match. Yes. And then the day of when we went, we were gonna ride with Jeremiah. We ended up riding with someone else. And we drove and we didn't take the route to go straight up. Yeah. We didn't take the Michigan route where we went right through Michigan. We took a different route where we were in Indiana, yep. then Illinois, Chicago, yeah. yeah. 
Illinois, and, and then Wisconsin. the crack infested state known as Wisconsin. Shouts out to Wisconsin, horrible state. Fuck Wisconsin. Very, very, Shouts out. Very horrible state. Horrible. Now, the wrestling is fine, but the state being in it. Not even the good fucking parts of the city are good. It's yeah. all shitty. Yeah, Wisconsin was shitty, and we ended up getting stuck in Wisconsin. Yeah, the worst fucking state ever. Three Jesus hours Christ. from the show, I believe. I thought it was four hours. But either way, it was far as fuck. Yeah, so we it, had some car issues and we couldn't yeah. make the show surrounded by crackheads uh, yeah every single place we walked every yeah. single place someone asked us for a cigarette yep <laughs> so my favorite was when they asked us for, for a ride, a ride. Why oh we my were... <laughs> god so there's four dudes surrounded by this one chick who's fixing this tire right and fucking this crackhead <laughs> pants down to his knees right just down to his knees no belt walks up to us and says hey uh can I, can I get a ride <laughs> We're fixing our car. Everyone's in a bad mood because we can't go to the show. I'm, our cars, we don't know how we get home. So I'm at the show. The we don't know how we get home. The amount of marijuana that I had consumed by that point was so fucking much because I was just so stressed. And then when we walk, we just see random ass people arguing, like yep. always. And like, it turns out, <laughs> in our Uber, we found out that apparently in Milwaukee, there's a gang issue. <laughs> yeah. So we got to watch the police crack down on one of the elite Wisconsin gangs. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they said the gang just got caught today, actually. Yeah, just <laughs> actually, got, like, right over there. <laughs> he pointed it to us in everything. This is shoot. This is real story. Like, for real. He explained to the whole fucking story. So, like we said. That guy the, was nice. The car ride from hell because the car, it broke. We had issues. Yeah. And we didn't know how we were going to get home. So the show. The show. The home. home. Luckily, we made it home. Shouts out to Texas Tony. Shouts out. Oh, my My friend. intern. Thank you so shoot. much. Thank yeah, you. Got us. Drove all the way five hours to get us and take us home. And fuck all of my real life friends. Shouts out to Stoner Ref, though. Shouts Shout out for Stoner Stone. Ref for knowing how to fix a tire, because I certainly... I'm not afraid to admit that I don't know how to change a tire. I know all these... Some of these old school dudes will be mad at me because I let a woman change a tire. Well, fuck you. I was high, and I was scared. And all I right? was upset. <laughs> Sad. And, and Depressed. I, I was... So high at that point, I couldn't even tell you how we got there. Listen, my anxiety does not kick in a lot, but it kicked in that day. You know it's really bad when he tells you straight up that his anxiety is kicking in. <laughs> That's how fucking bad it was. Holy yeah. Holy shit. That, that, so that, that sucked. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what's next? Fuck it. We gotta, we gotta love wrestling to fucking do that shit, man. Yeah, yeah. And, That's and, why I don't like when I see like Facebook posts. And I know I'm going to get up on my soapbox for uh -oh. a second. Uh -oh. But, like, I don't like when I see, like, fans that, like... If you take pictures, that's one thing. Okay? If you take pictures, that's one thing. But if you're a fan that, like, doesn't really... Like, you just go to the shows, and you're posting and, like, tagging wrestlers, talking about you're wrestled out, it, it doesn't really track with me. Like, I, I... Like, forgive me if I'm wrong, but, like... I was wrestled out when I broke my ankle mid-match and had to take a fucking military press into the chairs. That's the point where I was wrestled out. You know what I mean? Well, you don't even have to post it, though. When you're wrestled yeah, out, you like, don't gotta post it. Like, you don't gotta, like, it's, it's weird. Like, it just kind of makes me feel shitty because it's like, I know all those weekends where it's like, we're going three days, like, away from home. And then, like, we're going right back to our normal jobs during the week like it ain't shit. But it is a lot. To be honest with you, at least it's a lot for me because you know I'm a little bitch. Yeah, Yo, you know, no, like sometimes fans they need to have a break from wrestling, and sometimes they gotta post it on Facebook to let everybody know that they're having a break from wrestling. Sometimes you know the fans they have a really hard job; they have to sit there and watch the show. Okay, I wasn't gonna say I wasn't gonna go there. What? It's I, true. I, they need that. Sometimes they gotta announce it on Facebook so everyone will know. That they won't be there. And tag wrestlers in it, too. <laughs> they need to tag wrestlers. They need let to let those tag, wrestlers know. Let them know. Out of all the eyeballs that watch you, mine will not be there that day. 
God, if I got tagged, I would feel so <laughs> fucking shitty. Oh, my fucking God. Holy um, shit, I hope that never happens to me. Well, you know, off of that subject, what's next? Well, fucking, well, brother, we're all scrambled around today. <laughs> like, nothing's fucking organized out this bitch. All right, fucking. You want to talk about her foot getting stabbed? No, no, no. Let's let's not let's not jump the gun, brother. Let's talk about. Uh, oh right. Going back it. to TKW though. All right. Or not TKW. F U. We won the trios title. We did, like we said we were gonna do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But then the next day, not the next you. Day. Not the next day. Two days later. No, nah, I, I want to go even before that. A couple hours later. We beat the fuck out of Adam Wick after oh. we did a great job on commentary. Yeah, yeah. Great job. Send yeah. us that. Whoever has that commentary footage, please send us that. Cody Fleming, we're please, looking at you. Please, for the love Shouts of God. Shouts out to him. Big fan of the podcast. Yes, big fan. Thank you. Anyways, what were you saying? Uh, The next day, or maybe the two days later, your group, Detroit Chapter of Cobra Kai, won the Pro Wrestling All-Stars Trios titles. So you... Technically, won two trios titles in back to back nights. Yeah. With both groups being four person groups. You know, <laughs> honestly, it's, it's kind of a. So, my question is which trios, which group, Social Reality or Cobra Kai, do you like more? Is this where I drop the bomb on everybody? I guess this is where I do it. So, uh, I've been planning to leave Cobra Kai for three months ever <laughs> since I broke my ankle. I've been what? planning. What? I've been planning this for a really long time, and the kicker is, LJ has no idea that it's coming. What What is the date that we're recording this on? It is... Well, Metro Pro is tomorrow, bro. July 8th, a Friday. Metro Pro is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I wrestled return. Darian Ultra. Your return singles match. That's right. And honestly, it's kind of funny, because like he'll hug me, he'll talk about how it's great to have me back, but he has no idea that... In like maybe twelve hours, I'm gonna stab his ass right in the back, just so I can get a better opportunity. It is what it is, honestly. Jesus Christ! What you would do the same thing? Listen, social reality, critical content. I'm in two four person groups myself, and I can honestly yeah, and say, and you co lead both of them. And I can honestly say, I would not turn on either faction. I wouldn't turn on social reality either. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, like, hey, man, you were there for me when I broke my ankle. When I broke my ankle, you can edit this clip in, too. Uh, Iron Eagle, actually, is the one to carry me out, followed by Roadhouse Daniel Wolf. So LJ Lawrence was nowhere to be found when I needed him most. I think that's I think that's wild. I said that. Yeah, you did. You're the one who actually brought it up to me. I'm I glad did. you did that cuz it opened my eyes, honestly. Good. Like all the times that like I was there for him in his corner when he needed it and then in my time of need he couldn't even be there. Like that's just what type of sensei are you, honestly? Oh, it's like you're taking the words out of my mouth. I I wish I could be there tomorrow at Metro Pro Wrestling. I wish I could, but unfortunately I'm gonna be on a yacht somewhere. But I like you got important YouTube business. Yeah, yeah, headquarters stuff. Yeah, but uh, (laughs) back to Jess the ref. (laughs) Uh, uh, I wanted to bring this up because she asked me to bring this up. She asked us to bring this up actually that she's been training for six years. Oh, by the way, hold on. I gotta clarify because people are gonna get probably gonna get offended at that last. It's it's calm down. It, it's not as real as you think it is. Calm down. Brother, you All should right. not have to say that. I'm pretty I, sure. I shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't. You're right. I shouldn't have to tell people that that was a work. I shouldn't have to do it. Or maybe it is real. Who fucking knows? But fucking, I can't, I shouldn't have to say that. That's so fucking wild. And this actually goes back to the positivity thing that I was talking to you about before we even started recording. Well, wait, before you go on a tangent, let me just say, Jess oh, asked I'm me ready. to, I'm Jess, ready to go the, off. Jess the ref asked me to bring this up. She's been training for six years, and she wanted to know our opinion on that. My opinion is she should just go get trained by Gio Bronco so she can get trained real quick. She got the first match real fast. Yours? What's your opinion? Did you have one? Oh, back to your rant. Okay. Not, not no more. Back fuck, to... fuck the rant, she actually. Should... I wasn't ready for that. If she just take a Gio Bronco seminar, she could probably have her first match, like, in, like, 
Next you week. actually make me feel bad what? because, like, <laughs> fuck, I'm honest. man, goddamn. I'm um, what? I'm being honest. Like, I'm. What? I can't disagree with anything. Did I say that anything you're wrong? Saying. No, and I can't disagree with that. But go back to your rant. Positivity. That was that was episode seven, I think. Oh six. my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what that was episode it? six, actually. Brother, what episode are we even fucking on? Eight, but go back oh, to shit. what you were talking about. And this goes back to the thing that you're fucking deal against Midwest Scub. Where, like, Shouts out to him. People got offended at that. It just fucking was wild to me. Because shouts out to them because they had no problem with that. Still, I know I'm bringing it up again. But I think like it's warranted that like... Anytime you work somebody too good, it seems like they almost get mad. Exactly, exactly. Like, I, I think that's kind of lame. And it's not my fault. Look, it's not our fault. We're not trying to work the boys. But if they get worked, oh well. Oh well. Speaking of that, uh, Big Murph. Any Big Murph news? Because he works the um, boys a lot. I did add him on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. And he does have deals. He, he has deals? Yeah. Deals on... What I'm not too sure, but it says there's deals. What he posted on his story? Yeah, I don't watch his story. It's way too long. Um, what? Like his snap story is way too long. I don't have time to watch all that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. What? Nah, nothing. I watch all your snap stories. I watch yours too. <laughs> well, mine are fucking. I post one picture every six months. There's not fucking much to watch. Yeah, uh, touche. I've never been a social media guy, believe it or not. Yeah, as you sit here as co-member of social reality. <laughs> well, well, but like, off of that subject, shouts out to Isaiah Bronner, Ren Jones, James Alexander, Mal- MM3. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Vendetta, Briar. and Briar Wellington, all and on Uncle Chase Ver- uh, Burnett, all, all on GCW and AEW. Congratulations, yeah, yeah guys. we we missed that, but congratulations. That's a great group of names. So they all killed it. I like. I only saw clips of the GC. Actually, I saw Chase's whole match, but I only saw clips of Malcolm Briar and Tommy. But looked like they killed it. Chase had a really awesome match. Get well soon, Chase, because he actually got injured on the finish. Uh, Isaiah Bronner did amazing. And Ren Jones, J- James Alexander did amazing. And Ren Jones definitely stood out at AEW to me. He was great to watch. Yeah. we I knew it was him off rip. <laughs> I've only ever seen one person with that hairstyle. I knew immediately that that was him. And from GCW and AEW to the Deathmatch Circus. Oh, no. I think somebody got stabbed at GCW, actually. GCW? Yeah. Who the fuck got stabbed? No. Yeah. What? Yeah, he got stabbed. And then a fan got stabbed at Deathmatch Circus. Wait. Hoodfoot got stabbed? You don't know this? No. Yeah, Hoodfoot got stabbed by a... I think his name was Slade. It was like a really deep cut. Like they had to stop the match. And oh, the table oh, and he got hurt. Oh yeah, because I saw like yeah. Schwartzy or Randy posted on Facebook. About, yeah, I do know. You're right. Yeah. Well, get well soon, Hoodfoot. Get I well saw. Soon. I saw your match at Horseland versus GCW. That guy is insane. Very cool dude too. Oh yeah, he is really really good. Whenever you're in the locker room with him, he will really give you some good advice. But mm-hmm. man. Jesus Christ. The deathmatch video. The stuff is, he puts himself through, man. Is, it couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. I'm not, I like, I, I, when I first started wrestling, I didn't like deathmatches at all. Then I started warming up and warming up. Yeah, absolutely. Warming up. I'm, I'm, I'm warming up to it, to be honest with you. You like deathmatches when well, we like, first started. I already liked deathmatches as a fan, but as a wrestler, I was like, You're I about to know. start doing them? Okay, well, I'm not saying that. But like, <laughs> like, I don't know. I might... Take a two. Yeah, we did promise Pro Wrestling Edge match when we, thirty. Match thirty, we do a death match we where did. we actually we will have to do death match things in it. That we did make that. I don't know yeah. what the fuck I was thinking when I promised them that. Well, brother, hey, we don't get booked against each other anyway. <laughs> but someone got stabbed at death match circus. I don't really know any that, details. So. I don't know any details of that either. So moving on. What's All next? right. Oh, <laughs> fuck that story. I guess. Yep. So we're moving on. <laughs> That's right. So. 
Solo was at my house, and I told him I was going to tell this story. So, shouts out to you, Solo. And I said, I told him I was going to tell the story, so I can't. Oh, is this the... Oh, I don't know what you, if you know, but... I, yeah, I know. Solo was at my house, and we were watching a Brutus Atwell match. Yep. No, we did not fall asleep, Bubba. Uh, <laughs> but he did the spot where he sticks his finger in someone's ear. And Solo's like, uh, Brutus is disgusting. He stuck his finger in my ear and ate it. He ate it. And it was so funny because I had a match with Brutus that weekend. I think it was that day. It might have been that day. And he asked me, he's like, can I pick your nose? And I said, no. He said, all right, your ear. And I'm like, be my guest. So this guy, I'm thinking he's going to work it. This is the ear hole, right? I'm thinking it'll go like this. No, this motherfucker sticks his finger all the way in the ear, digs in it, Eats it, the crowd, you know, reacts. Goes to the next rope, because you know there's four sides. Oh, goes, no. So he goes to one rope, does it, ear and a finger, eats it. Next rope, ear and a finger, eats it. Next rope. Then on the fourth rope, I'm thinking, all right, whatever. We all, work all four sides of the crowd. This guy puts his finger in my nose. I, I grabbed his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't like COVID test, and I don't like a real life finger in my nose. Jesus. So I'm thinking you can work it, cause right here my finger it it looks like it's in my nose, but it's a work. It's it not in good there. enough to me. No, Brutus, it wasn't good enough for him. He put his finger all the way up my nose, Solo's nose, your nose, not my nose, brother. <laughs> and he ate it. He ate it. So it's a work. You don't have to actually do it. That's what I want to tell you, Brutus. You don't actually have to eat people's earwax and boogers. You know, what's next? Their ass? Like, what? I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. So and Midway through a match, <laughs> just, he just pulls down the tights. No, he just starts eating their ass. <laughs> no, he doesn't that do that. would be fucking so <laughs> No. I don't think he pulls down their pants and eats their ass. I think he goes in their trunks, digs in their asshole, and then licks his finger. That's what I'm thinking. What the fuck? Why do we always talk about weird shit? Why can't we ever fucking talk about normal fucking shit? KTB, ladies what and gentlemen. Fuck on that note, sponsored in part by the lovely fuckers at Lethal Lucha. I whoa, shouldn't whoa. call them fuckers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, I wasn't done with the story. Oh, my fucking God. I was not done. So I asked Brutus, has he ever tasted it for real? And he said, oh, yeah. And he said one time, I'm not going to name the person whose name he told me, but he said he dug in their ear and he looked at his hand and he could see that there was earwax on it. But he still ate it. Now, off of that subject, it's time to put someone over. That's bro. right. Sponsored by the beautiful people at Lethal Yeah, Lucha. we got sponsors. We got a sponsor. You know, somebody said that we would never, ever even get fans to watch this. Fans come up to me all the time. I know. All Makes the time. Makes us feel great. But yeah. Like, but, uh, what is this? What's the segment? Then they put them over. Put them over, brother. Is sponsored in part by... Lethal Lucha and Lethal Lucha TV. On YouTube. That's uh, right. Be sure to check out LethalLucha.com, the yeah. website. They got and the Entitled on it. Yeah. On Chase y- Burnett. Yeah, great wrestlers have wrestled there like them. Sean Tyler. Uh, what's his um, name? Fro Gun. Fro Gun. Shouts out to Fro Gun. Uh, but yeah, make sure you check out their YouTube channel and their website. And on that note, let's put someone over. Of course, we let them sponsor the good segment. Yes. The segment where we're not. Not the dumb shit that we talk about. (laughs) We want them to sponsor the good segment. Oh, dumb stuff, brother. I got a new segment, and I cannot wait for you to hear it. But before we get to that, let's put someone over. All right, on that note, I'm going to let you go first. Oh, okay. All right, so this week, I would like to put over someone who I... Really, really looked up to because of his, I saw him for the first time at a show and I thought like, kind of like J- Jason Hodge, I was like, oh, this guy looks like a star. And then I found out like, this guy really, um, when he first started, he was really skinny and then he worked on his body and now he looks like a freaking superstar. So like, I respect his body transformation and I respect like how nice he is in the back. And they, he was a worker who I think I can call a friend. He really became my friend. My boy, Isaiah Moore, the human highlight. 
He's so nice. He's one of the nicest people. Yeah. And like, I took a car ride with him once. We traveled to Wisconsin, oddly enough. Fucking piece of shit state. And this guy is humble as hell and so nice. He's not about no drama or nothing. And he just. Come on the podcast, Isaiah. He actually asked to come on the podcast. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, last week. He wants to be on this show? Last week, yeah. I was at the um, show, and like he said, I got to come on that podcast. He literally said that. That's a true story. And like I was like so surprised, and I like turned to somebody. I was like, hey, he just asked to be on the podcast. I'm just saying. And he was like, I think it'll be a cool dynamic. So, yeah, Isaiah Moore asked to be on the podcast. I'm just saying. Also, he had my favorite match that I had this year. So, Isaiah Moore. I like that he's training. He's helping people out, like his little group. I call him Isaiah Moore's kids. Yeah, he's you know? the father of Twist Flippin'. Kenzie. I was just about to say, you took well, the words out by her. Kenzie. Yeah, twist Flip, but she's got to have like a um, dive. Drop? Oh, dive? <laughs> I mean, it fits. So I'm going to twist, flip, flip dive, skip. skip. Oh my <laughs> God. There it is. We found it. Kenzie, you got a name. Shouts out to Kenzie, too. She watches the podcast. Oh, she does? Yes, yeah, she does. She told me. Lots of people. Hey, brother. Lots of people are fans of the podcast. I don't know if you know that. Oh, now that we just put ourselves over <laughs> the one segment where we don't do that. Shouts out to Isaiah Moore, though. My yeah. boy. And speaking of wanting to be on the podcast, one of the guys that I'm going to put over. Oh. He wanted to be on it when we were like one episode deep back when we thought this shit was going to flounder. And I just got to put over Dre Jacobs. Oh! Well, you knew it. I knew it. I was thinking in you my head it. who it could be, and I was like, oh, that's Dre. And nah, man. Dre has been nice to me from the very beginning, man. He's been giving me great advice since day one. Great wrestler. He got into a, he got into a picture with us at FU, actually. He, he, can you edit you. that in? Yeah, of course. Yeah, the one flipping us, or flipping the camera off. Mm-hmm. Put that one in there. Great. But, like, every time I watch a Dre Jacobs match, I think it's good. And, like, he's a guy that, like, I don't model myself after because he's bigger than me and I can't lift people but like just mentality wise I want to try and emulate him a bit more yeah I'll I'll emulate after him he's he I remember at the last XI show he was showing me I know this is your put him over but I'm gonna put him over too he was showing me some of his old matches and I was like god damn you're doing whip re-whip spots he Dre Jacobs used to be a spot guy <laughs> spot spot bro, monkey Dre Jacobs. I, I love Dre's matches so much. And bro. that is true. He was one of the first people putting over the podcast. So. Yeah, he he was also one of the people putting us over on the TJ Elbow thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, I'm just saying, Dre Jacobs encouraged us to keep doing the TJ Elbow. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We're not. The, we're actually the messengers. We're just delivering the word. Shouts out to you, Dre Jacobs. But. Shouts out War Inc. in general. Yeah, all of them, so nice, including yeah. TJ, sorry, kayfabe, <laughs> but anyway, um, off of that segment and on to my new segment, oh, because God. last week we did a lot of talking about Jack Price, did you, you know? get an okay for this one? Uh, well, you don't know what I'm about to say, brother. I just gotta... <laughs> you know, we talked a lot about Jack Price, and that was like a big, a favorite Some segment. Some would say too long. Some people thought it was too long, but they loved it. It was like it was like the best part of the of That's the episode to said. a lot of people, right? <laughs> so I decided to create a new a new segment. Oh god! It's called the Jack Price Biggest Dick of the Week Award. <laughs> what? So if you see this part of the fucking podcast where we're not focused, there we go. If you see this... Sorry, technical difficulties, we're back. Yeah, our footage may may or may not have gotten out. I hope hope we still have. I'm going to fucking cry. All that shit is so good. I have no clue. But anyway... Tell me about this fucking thing. So each episode at the end, we will give out the Jack Price Biggest Dick of the Week Award. And this award goes to the person who who has been the biggest dick of the week. Brother, you know... The following views is not, <laughs> they, this is all him. What? I didn't do this. This is, I'm just finding about this at the same time you guys are. All right, well, all right. this is how this is going to work. It's kind of like the opposite of put him over, brother. So we're going to say the name at the same time on the count of three. What? So why yeah. you got to drag me into this? Because you're the co-host, brother. So I got to guess what you're guessing. No, we're just going to say who we think the biggest dick of the... 
How? The biggest dick as an asshole or Yeah. <laughs> Brother, we can't do this. Why not? We got it. Alright. After one, so and three Wait, I don't have a name. Oh. You just told me about the segment like thirty seconds ago. Actually I got one. Alright. Three, two, one, Adam Wick. You know what? <laughs> Fuck what I was going to say. Correct. <laughs> yes, actually. Jacob Fatu. What did he do to you? <laughs> no, I was going to choose my cousin. One of, I was going to choose one of my real life friends who was in Wisconsin at the time that we were and he didn't tell me until last week. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Well, Adam Wick. But yeah, berated us on commentary the whole yeah, time we, we were on commentary. We didn't do shit to you. We dog. didn't do anything. Anything. To you, except call you a wicked a few times, but that's a it. A few times. You did not hear us. And it's on your tights, anyways. If you don't want to be Is called it, really? it, it, yeah, it's right on his tights. I don't know why he dislikes it so much. It's literally, it says a wicked on both sides. So, congratulations, Adam Wick. I'm glad we could uh, agree on this. You just won the Jack Price Biggest Dick of the Week Award. Hope you enjoy it. And that's it for this week's edition of KTV. Lord. There may or may not be an episode nine. <laughs> Who fucking knows? We're just flying by the seat of our fucking ass at this point. Make sure you check out Lethal Lucha on their website and on YouTube. And on YouTube. Lethal Lucha TV. Lethal Lucha TV. And for Top Gun and for Forever Young, we will catch you later.